to the Mindset RX podcast, a show for athletes, functional athletes who want to master their champ's mindset and gain the champ's mindset. My name is Tom Foxley. I'm the founder of Mindset RX, and on today's show, I want to pass on a few lessons. Um, for those of you who have been listening to the show for a while now, or for the last week, definitely, you'll know that I'm my my training has kind of gone from being a direct focus on CrossFit and kind of not not competing in there, but self mastery within the realm of CrossFit to like falling in love with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So whilst the exact story that I'm going to be talking about is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu based, um, which is a martial art for those of you who don't know, and it's kind of the one of the most functional and useful martial arts there is. Um, whilst it's going to be focused around Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or BJJ the lessons will apply entirely to the functional scene as well. Because I know the majority of the people who listen to this are functional athletes. They compete in CrossFit or a similar kind of not branded activity in in that kind of world. So um, that's that's where this is coming from. And I had my first competition on Saturday. And whilst I did a fair few CrossFit competitions or fitness competitions, um to come back to a sport that I'm very passionate about doing well in and I want to excel in was a refresher personally on what it feels like to be the on the athlete end of the stick because I'm, I'm very used to guiding athletes through this and, and fulfilling my role as a coach to athletes who just compete in local competitions or who want to kind of master themselves and, and take better steps themselves all the way through to CrossFit Games athletes. So everyone in that kind of spectrum, those are the kind of people that I've worked with. But to be on the floor and to experience that emotion for myself again, to experience the mental challenges that come along with that and the physical challenges was like was brilliant in terms of what I'm going to pass on to you guys. So let me fill in with the way it went to begin with. The competition for me, I ended up in bronze place, which is fantastic. So third place. Um, before you get overexcited though, there were only four of us in the competition in because you got like each individual um, belt or ability level essentially. And then you've also got weight categories within them. So within my, uh, within my division, exact division, which weight belt and, I'm um, sorry, white belt and weight division there were only four of us in there so that doesn't really uh like so uh, to to say that i kind of smashed it is a lie but it's my first competition so like i'm very very happy with the outcome and the outcome being i got used to competition which was my only objective and i think that's probably before i even get into the points um i want to really i know i said this before when i've when i've talked about it as well but really emphasize the fact that my my entire uh, focus with this was on the effort that I put in and controlling controllable. So I was only focused on what I could do as an athlete, none of the results whatsoever, because I've got no idea what's going to happen. There could have been someone who had no right to be in there. There could have been no one in the competition. There could have been like all these kind of uncontrollables. I was just wanting to focus on my effort. And for that, I entirely did that. And whilst it's a bit kind of, not disappointing, but I suppose a bit of an anti-climax anyway, to turn up to a competition, especially driving all the way up to Manchester, or sorry, getting the train all the way up to Manchester, um, spending the night there and kind of and going down that route. It was a fantastic experience to learn what it feels like to be back on the floor. And whilst I talk about um, intensity tolerance in within the CrossFit world, it, it essentially means maximizing your potential intensity tolerance and maximizing your potential are exactly the same thing and within a pyramid that i teach to all the athletes i work with familiarity is the 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 kind of the second step up um, you have like a very baseline thing and then you have familiarity and familiarity is a very fundamental piece of fulfilling your athletic potential and becoming the best version of yourself so let's get into the five main points um the familiarity one is actually the first point and the the kind of the fact that I was in a completely unfamiliar environment even in an unfamiliar part of the country with people that I've never trained with we're in like a, an environment that I'd never been in before that it, well let's just say it had as much 
unfamiliarity as possible within that environment. So how can you make this more familiar? And this is something I kind of thought about beforehand. And I just thought, what kind of familiar, uh, what kind of um, familiar environments or what kind of familiar rituals can I take with me? And the rituals really stuck with me because I can take the ritual of the warm up to the mat. I can take the ritual of slapping hands, which is how you initiate the the first fight. Um, that's how, like, that's the ritual I could take with me. I could take the ritual of what food I eat and how I hydrate and my mental preparation before that. So if you are someone who really struggles with, oh my God, this is so new. This is so new to me and like, I don't know what to do. Take the familiarity with you from like, because you can, there's so much that you think the, or you don't realize you can take it from even from the clothes you're wearing to um, the water bottle you drink out of anything that can ground you and take you away, away from the overwhelm of being in a different uh, scenario or environment is exactly what you want to do so take the familiarity with you the second thing I'd say is uh, talking about distractions ironically as my phone in the corner of my eye buzzes up and lights up and distracts me from this um, so eliminating distractions and by the way I've just put that to the side um, eliminating distractions is going to be key um, I'll be completely honest I, this is one of the ones oh, that'd be my phone dropping off if you heard that um, as I put it away very <laughs> very well and very safely um, this is something I screwed up on as I was saying eliminating distractions um this, like, I, I went to Manchester and very close by lives my brother and my niece. So I was like, you know, I'm going to, like, put together the two things, like, put my family visit and this competition to kind of take the pressure off me, which I think in its, in itself was a very good idea because I didn't just have the one purpose of going to Manchester because I've got to compete and got to do well. That's the kind of the self-talk that I, I know I would have been tempted to go down. Um, So I, I put the two together. What I should have realized is inviting them on along to a relatively small competition was a bad thing to do because not only did I have the mental preparation of getting ready for a, a fight, let's put it that way. It was a real fight where you're trying to um, submit by choking out or by kind of putting into full extension and, and ripping on a man's shoulder. Like that's like that's what environment I was preparing myself for mentally but I also had the the challenge of looking after and like I did basically nothing but still is in the back of my mind it was something else to think about of looking after my niece making sure my six-year-old niece was happy making sure my girlfriend was happy make sure my brother was happy um, and as brothers will mine was like at any kind of opportunity like perfectly aligned and perfectly waiting to to take the piss out of me to rib me um which is a yeah that that's what brothers do and i should have anticipated that so that's something i needed to to do better and i will do better um the next piece that i, th I think i did well is have a clear plan i had a clear plan of attack it didn't quite play out how i wanted it to um but that is absolutely fine and i'm, I'm happy with that i went in with plan with being intensely physical and for the first three minutes of a five minute fight, I was up. I was up on points because I lost on points eventually. Um, but I was up on points. I was four nil up and I was doing very, very well um, until I kind of, I lost sight of the plan from there. My, my plan was to nail him very early on and out physical like out physical him and kind of rough him up a bit and um, and i did that very very well to begin with you can see it's kind of shocked to like how athletic i was I and mean, that's my exact advantage so what i really need to do is have an even more clear plan of what to do from there um which brings me on to my first uh, my fourth point sorry which is probably the most important this can be considered a failure that like you could look at this as a failure in as much as i've had one fight and i've lost it but really if we're looking at this as a 10 year journey, all I've done is gather data. I've, I now know more than I ever have done about how to fulfill my athletic potential. And when we are focused on creating a journey instead of the outcome, this is a, such a key point of my journey. This is such a fundamental building point of my journey. And it's, um, it's something that I can build on from here, but I now am in a much better place to go and thrive as an athlete, to thrive as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu athlete and to thrive as a human being. So, gathering that data has been key the next piece is going to be controlling the controllables um this is like on the on the ride up to the fight there are originally eight people in our division 
what this meant is that there was essentially going to be like a quarterfinals, like at the World Cup at the moment. There's going to be like a quarterfinals and then go to semifinals and then go be for the final. So there would have been um, like there there would have been like going through those three individual fights to get to the final. What actually happened is a few different people didn't turn up. So suddenly all the fight schedule was fucked up. I didn't know what I was doing, when I was doing, who I was fighting, like when I was fighting, on which mat I was fighting, all of this kind of stuff. So I didn't know anything. But I think what I did very well and like what the, especially my experience in the military helped me do as well, is knowing that I can't control any of that stuff. So worrying about it is pointless. What I can control is my mental state. And all I did in that situation was take a couple of deep breaths and just recentered on my inspiration statement of adventure warrior. Like, this is who I want to be. I know who I want to be, so I'm, I'm refocusing on that exact environment. So controlling the controllables, like, everything else went to shit. Like, for example, the guy that fought in the final, he didn't have a fight until the final. So he was fresh when he got to the final. So, like, he went straight in there and, like, and kind of nailed the, the guy that beat me because he was uh because it was fresh when he got there so it's kind of like but am i bitching about that no because it just happened it's something else and i wasn't in control of it so why would i care and it's all part of the journey the other piece and the, the kind of the most practical piece i think uh the easiest one to implement and kind of uh kind of is is the probably the least important one out of all of these to be honest with you is that one is none and two is one in short having more kit than is useful and um, than is necessary is a very useful idea for example two water bottles was very good because when i had to give one to my niece and she ran away from it uh, ran away from me with it i still had water to drink when i had enough food i still had enough food to share around with everyone else um and all that kind of stuff so and it's like for example my gi my equipment uh rash guards like anything like that i always had two of it and that's just um that's something that's definitely passed on from the military but i know will help you guys so if you enjoyed this episode if you want to hear more about uh being a functional athlete subscribe first of all and uh, sorry more about if you want to hear more about learning to have a champ's mindset and being a functional athlete at the same time subscribe leave five star review um and yeah i'd love these five star reviews coming in and it's really really useful so leave five star review subscribe tell a friend about it but most of all if you want to be part of the community the community that is growing and is becoming wonderfully active and um and supporting with each other and people are sharing their stories at the moment and everyone's helping each other which is fantastic and i'm kind of just having to guide the ship with it completely free community it's on facebook if you search for mindset for functional athletes athletes it'll be there um, i'll also put a link in this podcast description so depending on what platform you're on you should be able to just click the link um, but it's on facebook mindset for functional athletes and you'll find it there um, and of course leave a five-star review um, let me know what you think of the show and if you want to check me out on instagram go to in- um, sorry at tom foxley f-o-x-l-e-y on instagram or you can go to facebook.com slash mindset rx so romeo x-ray delta or you can go to mindsetrx.com so mindset romeo x-ray delta.com and um i'll speak to you on wednesday but until then have a fantastic week Bye.